Should your doctor be subscription-based? A new model allows as many visits as needed for one monthly rate. We'll talk about new concepts in healthcare and a conversation with the dean, John Dingle, on his years in the house and whether there's any hope for civility. Today is Sunday, December 23rd, 2018, and this is Flashpoint. Hi, welcome to Flashpoint. I'm so glad you're with us. And from all of us here at Flashpoint, we wish you a very Merry Christmas. Hopefully you can get a little time to relax this week. Certainly the news cycle is not ready to settle down for a long winter's nap. It was another very dramatic week in Washington. But this morning, I want to go back to something that actually happened the week before last. A judge in Texas struck down the Affordable Care Act as unconstitutional. Doesn't mean immediate changes to American health care. In fact, it would seem destined for the U.S. Supreme Court eventually, but it does once again provoke a lot of questions about one of the most important components of your life. For some time I've been wanting to talk about a new idea in healthcare. It's called direct primary care. It doesn't come through your employer or the government. It's basically between you and your doctor. You pay a monthly fee to subscribe to your physician. All the visits you might need that month are covered. You need medication? Well, they've cut a deal on prescriptions, which you would pay out of pocket. Your first question is probably the same as mine. What if you get seriously ill, needing tests or expensive treatments or hospital stays? Actually, that's just one question among many. And in a minute, I'll be joined by our Dr. Frank Lee George to talk with Dr. Paul Thomas. He's a physician and now author trying to upend the medical world with direct primary care. We'll see if it truly is a better mousetrap. A little later on this morning, an in-depth conversation with the man who served more time in Congress than anyone in U.S. history. John Dingell is out with a new book on his life and times, but it also amounts to a call for consensus. Where is that today? Well, it's all coming up on Flashpoint. A lot of debates about what to do about American health care. There's certainly an awful lot of talk about single payer, universal system. Uh, getting less conversation, and we'll correct that this morning, is the idea of direct primary care. And the author of a new book on direct primary care, The Cure for Our Broken Health Care System, is with us this morning, Dr. Paul Thomas from Plum Health. And I've asked Dr. Frank George, our medical reporter here at Local 4, because my assumption is you've got better questions on a lot well, of I don't things know. than I will have. <laughs> but Paul, thank Thank you very much for coming. Thanks so much for having me on. The first thing that I that I guess I want to get to is th this idea that would just I guess get rid of the government wouldn't be involved and neither would an insurance company, right? Not necessarily. I unequivocally recommend that folks have health insurance, but for your routine primary care services, the costs are much less if you purchase them directly through your doctor. Catastrophic care insurance is the kind of thing you're talking about. Yeah, then, right? you, you want to maintain an insurance coverage that you're comfortable with and use the free market or direct primary care services to lower the cost of your meds, labs, imaging services, and doctor visits. So I would kind of use you and your partners like a, I would belong to a club, basically. Yeah, you're, it's a membership model for healthcare. Uh -huh. So you can come in and see us anytime you need to. It's included in that you know, $49 a month starting for adults and $10 a month for kids. In fact, let's look at the pricing here. We've got a graphic here that um, unless you're in an insurance plan that I've never heard of before, this looks really reasonable and uh, yeah. much less than what you and I are paying, uh, Doc. I don't actually. I Absolutely, say about you, no, no. You're not only here; you're all, you've also got a hospital behind you. But I have an expensive health care plan yeah. as well behind me in the hospital. So it, you know, health care is expensive everywhere, and this is a very different way of doing things. Clearly, and it does make sense. And I have to say, I really applaud what you're doing Thank you. because I think it's wonderful that you are getting back to the most basic form of providing health care that is directly to the patient, cutting out all all the bureaucratic nonsense as much as possible. You don't need a biller and coder in your office. We don't. You save that money That's, right off the top yep. and pass that savings directly on to the patient, I assume. So your exactly. biggest concerns then with it are what? what where, well, does, where do the loopholes seem to be? So, you know, what's interesting to me is you're doing things just like we used to do things in family practice, you know, 100 years ago. You were the small town doc. Everybody would come to you with all of their problems. Mm -hmm. But the question now is, Back then, you could know almost all of medicine. The dentist was the doctor in the, in the town, so to speak. Nowadays, medicine is so much more complex. I guess, how do you deal with, let's say, specialty referrals, things that are out of your family practice yeah. domain? Right. 
The typical scope of care for a family doctor is about 70 to 80 percent of any concern that you might walk into the doctor's office with. So I can handle about 70 to 80 percent of all of your concerns. The rest you would typically refer. Now in my model, we use an e-consult platform called Rubicon, where we can write up your case history and send it to a board certified um, ophthalmologist or dermatologist with a photo or a copy of your EKG to a cardiologist and get a second opinion at no charge to you. So it really extends No charge to me because you have a, you've developed yep. a relationship with, the, with these specialists. Exactly. Wow. And it's called Rubicon. It's a consult platform that any primary care physician can use. I use it because I actually have the time to listen to you fully, to take down copious notes about your condition and send those over to the specialist and, and get an answer within 12 hours. Have you figured out where the sweet spot is for how many patients you can handle? Yeah, the typical across the country is between 500, 600 patients per physician. Now contrast that with the typical family doctor who has to have 2,400 patients. Who? So they're seeing 1% of their panel each day or about 24 patients a day. In our model, when we see 1% of our panel, it's about five or six patients each day. And that gives me an hour per patient to really sit down and understand what you're going through and help you through that situation. You and I have been looking at these price lists yeah, so because right. they've also cut deals, as I mentioned, on prescriptions but also on lab tests. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. from with your trained eye, knowing how you see these things cross your desk right. all the time in the emergency room, um, how's it look? Oh, I, I mean, this is this is clearly the way it should be. I mean, one of the things that I've always rallied against is, frankly, the opaqueness mm -hmm. of the way billing and charging is done within the medical care system. I mean, frankly, if you go into hospital A mm -hmm. versus hospital B, you don't have any idea how much you're actually going to be charged no. yeah. for any given test because it's different in each hospital. Uh, so this is great that it's all laid out in advance and, quite frankly, I think basically done, I think, at cost, it looks like. Exactly, because you're already paying the members. I want to give you as much value for your health care dollar as possible. So we make all of our prices transparent and we only charge the cost of the medication or the lab or the imaging service so that you get the most value out of the service as possible. Um, I, I don't know how to ask this uh, delicately, but is this lucrative for you? Do you make a fair, a fair enough money as, I mean, or do you have other physicians going, dude, you're really messing with our system here? Well. I think as the membership grows, as you get to full capacity, you earn about what you would make as an employed physician. Hmm. Maybe a little bit less, but we have a saying in this movement that nothing pays like autonomy. I can be the physician I was meant to be in this model, and it's really inspiring for other doctors to want to join this movement, because you have the ability to practice medicine on your own terms and not at the dictates of insurance companies or government healthcare systems. You had a question about how you keep it so that it's just not all sick yeah. people, but explain the way well, you Well, you know, so a lot of people in this kind of a model might think that if they're going to need to see a doctor often or want to see a doctor often, they're going to say, well, sure, I'll pay my whatever the fee is per month, mm -hmm. and I'm going to call that guy every day. <laughs> um, so how do you, I guess, control that? Um, or maybe there Even is no in control in that. room life, you see people. Right. I are, have frequent flyers, frequent exactly. Flyers, and they come the by, you know, pretty much almost every other day, every day in some cases. Um, and, you know, and we just handle their complaints as needed, but of course my model is very different because I don't deal with any of the billing and coding the hospital does, and ultimately that gets pay, co that cost gets passed on to insurers yeah, yeah, and yeah. the government. So how do you handle that, I guess, adverse selection in a way? Right, well we're in southwest Detroit, we're in a low income community where there hasn't been a physician like this in the past. So. We are open to everyone who comes into our doors. So in short, we don't. We don't cherry pick or uh, pick and choose who we want to be our members. We've taken all comers in part to grow the business, right? You know, we need people to come sure, through. Sure. And I'm really happy to help people with whatever needs they have. We have some folks who, of course, are the worried well who just want to have us in the back pocket. But we also have people who come in. You know, there's a gentleman who lives in the neighborhood who's 75 who walks through our office. We see him about every three weeks, a lot of times just to talk because he's lonely or perhaps lonely and just needs somebody to talk to. But that's okay because we built it in the model. There's enough people who use us once or twice a year where we can see 
you know, another group of people once every month. How right? many well, physicians have you got in the group so far? Right now it's just it's me. It's just you. But we're expanding and bringing on our second doctor in mm -hmm. July. Uh, so to the chief question that I had off the top there, if I get really, really sick, um, that adds a lot of cost because all this looks great, but I don't even know what a catastrophic care policy would cost. Mm. So tell me how it works if all of a sudden you find that I need serious care. If you need serious care, like if you have a heart attack or a stroke, you must go to the hospital, you must go to the emergency department and see uh, Dr. Frank McGeorge, right? Yeah. <laughs> or of one of his <laughs> colleagues, right? But the issue is that I unequivocally recommend that you have some sort of health insurance policy, but this is a great model for health care, for your primary day-to-day -day mm. health care needs. Mm. This is what we're here for, to help people uh, through those times of illness that are you know, within my scope of practice. Well, you know, I think it's wonderful that your practice is open basically to anybody regardless of their, their level of illness. Um, and I guess to that end, how do you take care of the fact that people need to be admitted to the hospital and may need a more aggressive medical care? Right, that's why you would have the insurance. So if you were admitted, I would call the physician who's taking care of you in the hospital and get a report sure. and perhaps make a social visit to make sure you're doing well. It's fascinating. It's called Direct Primary Care. If you want to read the book on it, uh, The Cure for Our Broken Healthcare System by Dr. Paul Thomas, and I believe it's on Amazon, right? It is. Available. Yep. So thanks very much for coming to talk about it. Fascinating. Thank you so and much. And Doc, thank you Maybe as well. the future. There you go. We'll come back and we'll talk about a lot of the past and the future with John Dingle. This is Flashpoint on Local 4.